Hi guys, I'm James from Battery, and today I'll be taking you through a very important part of your battery and BMS, the balancing algorithms. You have three to choose from depending on your system, your needs, and your charging behavior. So to start, the basic algorithm that the others add to is called top balancing. This refers to the way that it operates at the top of charge. There are four variables to consider. The first is your bypass threshold, marked in the toolkit software as CB9. Just going to find that for you now. So it's in hardware and cell mon because it relates to balancing. And we can see it there as uh, CB9. You can see it on the graph here too. So basically what this does is any cell that exceeds this threshold um, needs its current bypass, uh, the charging current bypassed around the cell. Um, so we can see that here, this cell's the highest, it's above this one, and it's having its charging current bypass to bring that back down again. So how does this balance the cells? Well, let's say one cell has a bit of self-discharge due to a defect or age. This means that it has a bit less capacity in it at the end of a charge cycle compared to the other cells. This means that when any cell reaches its uh, bypass threshold earlier, uh, that need, their, their charge current needs to be bypassed to avoid overcharging and give the remaining cells, for example cell 1 and cell 2 here, some chance to charge and catch up and level it out. So the second thing to consider is your charge target. So for top balancing it should be slightly higher than your bypass threshold or equal and is found in the remote tab of your software. So we'll head to uh, control and remote. Alrighty, so um, you can calculate an appropriate value to set in that voltage target by taking the bypass threshold and multiplying it by the number of cells in series, for example 16, and adding a small offset like 0.3 volts to make sure the charger actually pushes energy into the battery to allow the cells to bypass. So for a 16th cell lithium ion phosphate system like we've got here, that would be 3.47 volts times 16 cells, which is 55.5 volts, plus an additional 0.3 volts for a target of 55.8, which we can see here. A third thing to consider is your charged current. So cells have a small internal resistance, or large if the cell has a defect. This means that when your charger pushes current in, that small resistance contain, uh, creates a small amount of additional voltage across the cell. This may mean that your cell reaches the balancing threshold sooner than you expect. For the best balancing, your charge current should equal your balancing current at the end of charge. So what our limited value uh, for current does here. Charging limited mode is entered when your K9 reaches an initial bypass value of, for example, 3.49 volts which is the bypass uh, threshold plus 20 millivolts. Um, and it's marked in the software as CB14. We'll just go find that quickly. It's under charging and extra parameters. And so you just turn on this switch here if you've got a K9, which uses this value instead of a current value. Um, and yeah, we can see we've got it set to 3.49, which is a good starting point. If you're running block mons instead, you can find that under the um, bypass initial current value here. So uh, once once that block mon is having to balance at least uh, 0.3 amps, then that means that we need to slow down on charging. Another option you have is our dynamic voltage mode, which you saw earlier which allows you to creep up at the end of charge thresholds rather than operating always at maximum voltage. We've got more info on that in another video. So one last thing to consider is how warm your balancing boards get when they're used. If you do a lot of balancing, the board will heat up and if it gets too hot, we'll try and extend its life by pausing the balancing. Uh, it's also known as thermal relief. If you're finding that your balancing boards are working a lot of the time but not finishing the job, this might be why. To remedy this, you can add a fan controlled by one of our expansion boards to turn on when the balancing is active. The battery pack is declared full when all the cells have reached a 50 milliamp hours of accumulated bypass session milliamp hours per day for K9s. Um, so we can see that here under bypass session. 
it's uh, yeah waiting for 50 milliamp hours on all cells to declare the charge uh, complete. And if you're using block mons, instead that is all of them need to be by have bypassed at at least uh, 100 milliamps before we declare the ch charge done. Um, so yeah, when when they this happens, the BMS will declare the pack full and uh, yeah bypass complete, and this resets the state of charge to 100% to avoid a state of charge drift. This is really important because the little inaccuracies here and there add up and cause your state of charge to drift. So that's it for top balancing. On to our next candidate, latch bypass. So to start, let me explain why this is needed. If we look here at the charge curve of lithium ion phosphate, you can see that right up the top there's not much of the energy for this voltage swing. So when you're top balancing, the cell can drop back down in voltage uh, once you start balancing, uh, which then stops the balancing and uh, the charge cycle continues. It bounces in and out of that. We saw this pattern in customer systems and introduced latched bypass, where the bypass is latched on for a minimum amount of time after reaching the bypass threshold, regardless of whether it goes back under that threshold again. Uh, this can also help with systems without remote uh, CAN bus control. They're, they're operating on on-off, okay to charge relays and stuff like that. Um, yeah, they don't have enough control, so it bounces in and out of bypassing, and it takes a long time for bypass to get done. So this helps there. Um, you can find that under hardware and cell mon and bypass extra mode. So we'll hit edit so we can take a look at that. There it is, time latch. So here's a graph that describes this. Um, due to that sharp end of the charge curve that I mentioned, this hypothetical system has a cell voltage spike and that causes a stop to charging and balancing because um, we've hit that uh, charge cutout value there. But thanks to latch bypass, we can see it spends a configurable amount of extra time bleeding charge out of the cell when the charging is stopped. This allows us to reach the end of charge sooner rather than going in and out of charging too many times. If you're struggling to reach the 50 milliamp hours or bypass current on all the cells to reset your state of charge at the end of the day, this setting uh, can help. So we can see also under the more menu here, uh, bypass extra time, that's how you set that configurable time value. And now onto our third and most sophisticated method, auto loop. So this mode is really useful for a new pack that hasn't been balanced yet, or for NMC chemistry, as well as LTO and sodium ion, uh, because those have a really nice linear charge curve where the voltage correlates to the state of charge. For chemistries like these, we can set the voltage threshold anywhere and expect a corresponding state of charge. Uh, let's go over what it does. So in essence, it's top balancing, but with a threshold that moves progressively down to level the pack. So to start, the BMS will check a few things, uh, that the cell voltages are stable, the ba balancing boards aren't too hot or in thermal relief, uh, all the cells need to be above the low cutout, and the shunt needs to be below configurable charge and discharge current limits. You can also find them under the more tab here, so we've got uh, the cell volt low cutout there, which is basically when this process starts, and you can see, you know, the cells need to be stable for 15 seconds and these uh, current limits are usually set up. So discharge is zero here to say, don't run uh, while it's discharging, only run while it's charging. Okay, so um, yeah, usually used to configure to only run while it's charging because that's usually when you've got extra solar and you can afford to burn a little bit of energy. Um, rather than losing energy in your pack. So if all the preconditions are met, um, beyond the normal top balancing with CV9, the following additional things will happen. If the cell delta is greater than the minimum configurable value, which is the different gap here, so 10 millivolts in this case, uh, then the highest cells get balanced first from the top down. and uh, what happens is the highest cell gets kind of a band attached to it, and that band defines where we can set the target. 
Um, so it'll be set as the minimum cell if it's if that's within the band, or if um, if it's outside the band, it's a certain amount down. So that's that 0.25 volts there. This process gets repeated until all the cells fall under the low volt cutout, uh, or when all the voltages are nice and flat, i.e. they're below that delta of 10 millivolts. The purpose of the extra bypass modes is to provide more time to bypass the battery pack at an early stage. So you can find auto level in that same place as well, there it is. And if you weren't running any extra modes, just top balancing, you'd click none there. So with preemptive balancing, this allows the battery systems to lower the charge target voltage when reaching full quicker. Um, useful for lithium ion phosphate chemistry. So there you have it. This should get you started on keeping your pack nice and balanced. If you need some one-on-one -on -one support, you can book a support session with us and we'll get you sorted. Thanks. See you.